Oh, no, this is Scott from Wessex Blades. Um, this is going to be a sort of a walkthrough tutorial because I had a request, I suppose it was about two or three days ago. Um, someone sent this in, which is an early Doberman. Um, I'm requesting a sheath made for the blade along with a ferro rod. So I've made a ferro rod that sort of implies the same theme as, okay, so brass pin, oak. I haven't cynically copied the profiles, I've literally just done a ferro rod that complements it in some way. Okay, so now I've got the ferro rod and continue with the sheaf. Up to this point, I already got here, okay, this is the first sort of stage of me making a sheaf. Um, there's say how many ways can you skin a cat how many ways can you put a skin on and on there must be a million different ways of doing it um, this is one of the ways that I've come up against tackling me putting a sheath for a knife I've allowed enough so when that would fold over there's a decent amount of protection still left from the edge of the blade to outside and enough for stitching now that would also allow me chances for doing rivets. So give yourself enough, this being right handed, give yourself enough so it folds over. And at the moment, even though I'm not using water for wet moulding, there's plenty there. Okay? Far better to have it 10mm too big and you can trim it than 2mm too short and you're fighting trying to get it to fit. Now, for marking out that on the huge lump of leather that you would buy as a roll, which is just this huge great roll here, okay? Try and do all the marking out on what I side a buff side. This is sort of buff and slightly matte, and that's been rubbed down and sort of shiny. So there's two different sides to the to the leather and on varying grades of leather. What I buy is oak tanned tooling hide, oak tanned tooling hide from Tandy Leather. There's many different ways of getting the leather treated so it lasts longer and is able to be supple and you know holds its shape when it's wet molded and all the rest. Of it. There's alkali tan, chrome tanned. Um, but what I'm using is veggie tanned, or it's been tanned using oak leaves or uh, sort of shredded up bark or that is what this has been soaked in in order to treat this in order to make it workable in water to wet mold it around this blade I've now cut enough off from that side and done in marking out what I call the buff side now that's the, the rough end there what do you mark it out in? well I used to think it would be great to use a pencil because it doesn't mark the lever quite so permanently but after a while, the, the mark gets so faint, you've got to press so hard. Oh dear. The purists, I know, are going to go, ah. and I can absolutely, you know, any lever worker, lever crafter, lever wor artisan, yes, it's, it's a crude tool. But if you mark it out with a biro, exactly what you want, i.e. too big, you draw your lines in biro, you then cut exactly on the line with a knife, like this. Again, this is not a very traditional tool, you get some beautiful lever working knives, look like ulus, and you get it cut. Cut on the line, and by the time that you use this widget gizmo here, which is an edge beveler, you remove the biro off the lever anyway. So it's clearer, it's easier to see, it's still pretty accurate, and you take it off anyway. The edge bevel, if I go through a few tools, okay, this is a funny looking thing that looks like a, someone's done a V on the end of a chisel with. Basically, that shape there is ripping along the corner of the lever and beveling it. So at the moment, that's cut edge. So that's square. What you'll do with the edge beveler is literally knock the corner off and just skive that off of there. What tools would you need? Well, 
the edge beveler these funny looking things here these are grooving tools okay inside that hole on this thing here it's, it's got a sharp edge to it and you scuff it along the lever and it cuts it you see how it's marking my finger okay that's what it does to the lever but the spill the off cut comes out of the hole this comes out of the hole and you basically you're just grooving for where the stitching is going to go and a touch of water in the groove and you run the stitching wheel along it this does your spacing for the stitches so they're all nice and even this is one of the ways of doing it there's a load of ways you can have prong chisels they look like tridents and you can you can space it out that way but the stage on that at the moment is I've given myself enough lever I've marked it out with a biro I've got rid of the biro marks using an edge beveler so you can't see any biro marks anymore but I haven't removed so much that when I've got this joining up it still doesn't look pretty square and neat okay and then because I allowed enough for the belt loop bit with the dangler hook on okay this D thing I folded it over I've scratched the back using a knife or you can actually use the knife you're using scratch the back of this piece and then used cheap contact adhesive this stuff you you put on there you put on the back of the flap you leave it a few minutes it goes tacky you fold it over to where it's going to end up make sure you put the d-ring on first oh yes it's one of those molded electrical plug systems you know where you got to put it on first before you glue it and then i'm actually getting away with not protecting the lever at all and just holding it using these large clamps with the red sort of thermoplasticky ends on okay these things are fine they're not marking the lever in any way that I can see there's a detriment to it but whenever you do clamps most of the time you need to cover things up with this in order to use these clamps because these mark can you see the marks on the lever that there looks like so you're protecting your sheath by using off cuts of lever but at the moment I seem to be getting away doing this task and just allowing it to hold that layer like that so that's the stage I'm at at the moment and I've made the ferro rod now I need to make a ferro rod um, mount tube I, what this thing sits in when it's on the side of the sheath so we'll cover that in the next video so that's a vague walkthrough few tools a few approaches a few cheap tricks and um, I'll see you on the next installment because this is and I've got a few hours or so to be happily set okay and then we'll get on with doing this stage which is doing the ferro rod tube mount and getting that wet molded so I'll see you on the next one Scott from Wessex Blades this is the stage I'm at at the moment and I'm going to document it and do the walkthroughs as I go. It's just, I'd already got this far before the, the chap had asked for a, a walkthrough. So that's where I'm at at the moment. And see you in the next one. Cheers.